So this is a quick demo of a uh, hardware report a web tool I've been working on. Uh, I'm, I'm open to better uh, name suggestions. So the idea here is to just have a closer look at hardware issues that should be quite easy for an automated tool to catch uh, versus sort of in-flight issues. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at some logs. So first of all, I'm just going to load a pram file. Uh, so it just pulls up the, the hardware IDs and has a look at the various calibration parameters and just sort of presents that here with ticks. So uh, I can see what my first IMU is. I'm using it. It's had an Excel calibration. It's had a gyro calibration, not had temperature calibrations, and it's not got its position offsets set. And of course, I can see the same thing here for the second IMU. Uh, and then compass again, I can see it's using, we're using this compass. Uh, it's calibrated, so it's got the offset. It's had an iron calibration, so it's got the diagonals and off diagonals. But in this case, it's not had a motor calibration. Uh, so then we've got uh, some barometers that have not had wind compensation done. And we've got an airspeed sensor that we're using. Uh, and then you'll see this little sort of parameter uh, box here. So this lets us save a minimal param set. So it removes everything that is not ticked um, in all of these various boxes. Um, so it lets you cut down parameter sets to remove stuff that you really shouldn't be loading from parameters anyway. So if we hover over each of these tick boxes, it, it'll tell us what parameters it will it will include. So you can see if I tick position here, it'll include the uh, INS position uh, here for one and two. Uh, if I take wind compensation, you'll see we'll get these wind compensation parameters. So this lets you easily cut down param sets to minimize uh, what you send to someone else or what you have to sort of manually look through. Um, so that's a param file. So if we go and look at actually the same vehicle, but the full log, um, we can provide a bunch more information. So first of all, we can display the version and then this tool goes and has a look on GitHub and searches through all the tags. So we can also provide a link to the tag. So it's this commit, and then this commit is on the head of this branch here. Uh, so you can see the commit there, um, which matches our hash here. Uh, and of course, it's arch plane stable, and it's also plane 4.4. Four. So there's two tags for the same uh, the same spot. We can see uh, the flight controller and name. So this is what we save in messages. And then we've got the board ID and it goes and has a look at what the board ID uh, matches up with. Uh, so we've got the same used calibration, temperature calibration, precision offset tick boxes, but this now adds a health tick box. So it just goes and has a look in the health field in the log. And if it's healthy for the entire log, you get a tick. If it's not healthy, you don't get a tick. Um, so I can straight away from looking at this tool, see I've got two IMUs, they've been calibrated and they're healthy. Again, for compass, we get the health tick box. We get the health tick box here for this first parameter, um, but not the second barometer. So that must be missing from this log. Uh, and we've got an SP tensor. And in fact, in this case, the SP tensor is not healthy for the entire log. Um, then we plot a few temperatures. So we've got uh, the two IMU temperatures in this case. So you can see how hot everything is getting uh, on your flight controller. Uh, we've got board voltages, so servo and board, and you can see in this case, this servo voltage is pretty spiky, um, sort of half a volt spikes there. So it might be worth having a closer look at that on this particular vehicle, see what's going on there. Um, CPU load, so about 30%, bunch of free memory, uh, loop times. So in this vehicle, it's actually aiming for a 200 Hertz loop time. So that's a little bit unusual. Uh, because uh, plane uh, or quad plane is 300 and normal planes are 50. So seeing 200 means uh, this has been configured uh, uh, manually for, for some reason, but it is mostly achieving that 200 hertz loop rate. So the worst loop is an equivalent to 190 hertz. So it's not doing too badly. Uh, we have the big drop at the, at the beginning as we quite often do. Uh, when it's uh, sort of getting everything sorted out. This plots the free memory on the stack from the stack message and uh, you can see that 
plane's got a bunch of free memory. UAV can, yeah, has a bunch of free memory. So they're all ordered in the legend here by priority. And then it'll tell you as a percentage um, uh, how it's doing. So um, in this case, the log is using the highest percentage of its allocated memory, 69%. Uh, the storage here actually uh, stepped up and used a little bit more uh, during this flight. Um, you can sort of see the various ones here uh, change as we go along. Um, nothing really for concern. We don't see any of them sort of flatline at, um, at 300 or anything like that. Um, and then again, we've got this sort of save parameters stuff. So the save all parameters, because it's a log, you can just save all the parameters in the log. You can save just the change parameters. Now we have the default. And then you can use either all the parameters or the base parameters as a, a, a or, or all or the change parameters are base for an export of minimal parameters. Um, so uh, let's just save that minimal param set and we'll have a look. So you can see it's reduced, you know, over a thousand parameters in, in the full list, 227. So these are parameters that have been changed and are not included um, thanks to this sort of removal of calibrations. So this is sort of the real key flight behavior parameters. Uh, there's still a few setup parameters in here, of course, like server output functions and um, battery monitors and things like that. But this really cuts down the param sets. And I think you can sort of scan through these by eye and just see, oh, is there anything really far from default or quite unusual that could be causing an issue? It sort of helps helps one focus in on the changes specific to this vehicle. And of course, I might say, oh, well, I'm going to send these parameters to my friend, but I know he's got the flight modes the same and uh, uh, they want to use the same uh, airspeed sensors, right? So I'm going to tick these ticky boxes and we'll close save again. And now you'll see flight modes are included. Um, and we've got, uh, whoop, we've got our airspeeds will be in here somewhere. Uh, oh, here they are at the bottom. So it's saved the, um, the use and the uh, dev ID here. So I can sort of use this tool. I mean, the main use is to actually have none of these boxes ticked. Um, so you can just get the sort of key flight behavior parameters. Uh, you'll notice some things are grayed out here. So I can't include the reversals in this changed param set. And that's because none of them have been changed. So if I go to all, you'll see I can include them, but none of them have been changed. So I can't include them in this um, sort of changed minimal param set. Got the stream rates as well, because there's quite a lot of stream rate parameters, so obviously removing them um, cuts down the number of parameters in the log quite a bit. Uh, so that's that log. Let's have a look at uh, another one. Uh, so this is a Copter 4.4 log. You'll see Copter has a bunch of tags all for the same um, the same hash because uh, of Copter and Heli, and, uh, and it's also the beta on, on, uh, on Copter. So we get a bunch of tags um, from GitHub. We've got the board ideas again. This vehicle's got a CAN node. So it will list out the CAN nodes here. So we've got node ID 125, which is a here uh, GPS. And you'll see that that name is then repeated in the compass box up here. So uh, from the node I, uh, from the dev ID, I know it's a drone CAN on bus zero node 125. And then I can match that up with the a drone can log to get the name so you can tell which compass is which which is quite useful if um, uh, users don't necessarily know which node is what or what node id is what device um, especially if you've got you know automatic um, node allocation set up it won't be necessarily obvious to work out which is which so this uh, helps you. Of course, it doesn't help if you've got a bunch of <laughs> nodes with the same name, which is uh, quite common. Um, and, and it gives you the firmer version of the, of the CAN node. Um, again, nothing particularly exciting. Oh, in this log, we have MCU um, logging. So we've got the actual um, CPU voltage here, and it does show the, um, the min and max that we log. So about 3.3 and then you know, just a little bit of um, variation there. 
So that seems fairly reasonable. Uh, this one's obviously aiming for 400 hertz loop, uh, and it's not doing too bad managing to keep that fairly well. Uh, let's have another one. So this, uh, although it's labeled master, is not actually master. So this happens to be um, uh, a log from Andy. So it's going to warn us. It says, hey, this is not an official firmware release. And it'll actually do that if you load a log from master as well. And that's just because there's no tag. Master moves forward so quickly that the that, um, this the commit won't be the head. So it won't be able to find it. Um, but it does say, hey, I found this commit. And if we click on it, it says this. And it says, hey, this commit does not belong to a branch on this repository. And uh, and it uh, gives what was changed in that last commit. So this is quite handy if you've got uh, a log and you're not exactly sure what version it's on. Um, you can sort of have a look at the commit there uh, and see what's going on. Uh, it does tend to give these warnings. For example, if somebody's built manually off um, like a Copter 4.4 branch, but there's been a few commits gone in since the last tagged release, it'll also give this warning. So it's not completely fuel foolproof, but it will highlight um, if somebody's on an official release from the from the server. Otherwise, it sort of does its best, but you have to sort of go and poke about a bit manually. Uh, again, we've got uh, our healths for various things here. Um, temperatures and, and stuff. Uh, the interesting one in this particular log is that it's aiming for uh, an 800 hertz loop rate, uh, which it's mostly achieving, but then the worst case loops are way down at sort of equivalent to 500 hertz. So the worst case, case loops are, are really quite bad in relation to the average loop rate. So um, definitely something worth looking into in this particular log um, there. Uh, and then got a stack again, uh, and we could save a minimal prime set if we wanted to. Uh, so the last log I have here is one that's got some position offsets in. So it's quite a big vehicle, and uh, the position offsets were set up. So you'll see we've got position offsets ticked here uh, for inertial sensors, and this vehicle also has a few more CAN nodes. So we've got here three plus another here three plus um l431 perif and then a l431 d shot so we've got four nodes here and again it grabs the names up here this is one where the the compasses are both on here three pluses so uh, actually the name doesn't let you differentiate them uh, as it might if you had sort of two different node types uh, but we've got node id 40 and uh, 30. and then because we've got some position offsets it can actually go and do a plot of where it thinks uh, the various sensors are. So we've got our CG in the middle here, and then this is GPS 2 here, so that's behind the CG. See, our, the axes here are labelled with the, um, the direction. So we've got X offset, which is forwards, Y offset, which is right, and Z offset, which is down, and that matches the little arrows here. So in this case, this, the second GPS is behind the CG, uh, we've got the first UPX, which is in front of the CG, and then we've got IMU3, and uh, this is actually IMU1 and 2 as well. They're just all under the IMU3 blob here. Um, so you can set up your position offsets, and then you could load it into this tool and just double check. Oh, yeah, I was expecting GPS2 to be behind the CG. It's quite easy to get a bit mixed up and put in a minus where you meant a positive. You can sort of check that this matches where the, the sensors are physically. Um, on the vehicle. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of the whistle stop tour of this new tool. There'll be a, a, an open PR. Like I say, the idea is to sort of tick off all the sort of basic hardware stuff that you should really check in every log, you know, but one tends to jump straight to sort of attitude control and sort of more high level flight things, you know, but if all your gyros are unhealthy, you know, your attitude control is going to be rubbish and, and, Actually, it's quite easy for this tool to just check, oh, is the gyro healthy with the whole log? Oh, yes, it is. And if it's not, then it's not smart enough to go and tell you why, but it's smart enough to say, hey, you, you need to go and have a look at what's going on here. And then the key thing of the, the minimal param set at the bottom here is that uh, 
not only is it useful for sending parameters around and, and sharing, but it's also useful that this is a sort of manageable number of parameters, you know, a hundred or so, that I can actually just manually scan through these and make sure everything seems sensible, um, which I think is really useful for log review. You see if there's any parameter that's not usually set, maybe that gives a clue as to why something's um, behaving a little bit weirdly. Maybe there's some uh, edge case uh, that's not immediately um, immediately obvious. Um, or that might explain why this this user has seen some issue and we don't see that very often. They've got some slightly wacky config. Um, so yeah, that's this new uh, hardware review tool. Thank you.